you for joining us for this episode of Inside Town Hall. I'm your host, Madeline Shields. A few times a year, we gather several city councilors for a roundtable discussion on the topics that are most important to the city of Sioux Falls. And joining me for this roundtable are Marshall Selberg, Kurt Sale, and Janet Brecky. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we have a lot to talk about, so let's get started. First off, we're going to talk about the Sioux Falls for All. And it's a plan uh, that is funding with money from the American Rescue Rescue Act plan, or ARPA it's called, and it prioritizes the infrastructure and public places that benefit children, families, and neighborhoods. Uh, let's talk about this. There's quite a long list of funding for all of these different um, entities that make Sioux Falls a great place to live. And so um, things like the, the Butterfly House and Aquarium, um, there's behavioral he health uh, response and disaster responses. Let's let's talk about some of these things that um, ARPA is going to fund. Who wants to start first? Well, I think one thing we can talk about, I think it's been a really good year for the different branches of our government, local government working together, whether you have the administrative or the legislative branch or the you know, executive branch working with the council slash legislative branch. We've all kind of worked arm in arm for the last year on a number of items. And uh, I know in my five and plus years on the council, I've never seen anything quite like it. And it's kind of unprecedented, unprecedented, and I think it's been good for the citizens of Sioux Falls to kind of see everybody kind of team together and work on all these initiatives, kind of arm in arm. And that's where we've come up with this list that we'll be talking about today. So I think the citizens would be happy with their leadership and how they've come to some of these programs and solutions. And one of the things that we looked at as a council is it's not just the ARPA funds that were coming, they're designated. There were some leftover CARES Act money from last year too. And some of the cost savings that the city had from the previous year in 2020, because we did really tighten the belt when the pandemic came, not knowing how it was all gonna play out. Thank goodness Sioux Falls came through that very, very well. So we had a lot of pools of money and different allocations that we could look at. So we as a council listened to all of these different requests from nonprofits, from different departments that needed some extra money to get us through. And then we started holding working sessions and listening sessions and we put this together. I will say Sean Pritchard from the finance department just did an amazing job working with everybody to put it together. So that's how the list came together and there's still priorities that we want to fund going forward that we really haven't had the opportunity to do a deep dive in but more and more is going to come here in the future. Okay and can we let's talk a little bit specifically on what some of these um, these um, things are that, that this money will go toward. Um, we have the, the Butterfly House and Aquarium and, and it's specifically for things that are there they seem like their quality of life places um, for children and family and, and to make Sioux Falls a better place. Um, so we've got the Butterfly House and Aquarium. Um, we have the Public Safety Home Buying Program. Can we talk a little bit about what these are specifically and, and how that money is going to enhance these programs? I can talk a little bit about the Butterfly House. I've been following its journey, you know, before I was a city council member and I was on a Chamber of Appeals committee and we approved their, their fund drive. It's, they've been exploding out of the seams, you know, of the loc of the building location facility that they have. But when they decided to expand into a, an aquarium, um, what they journeyed into was a very unique experience that really is duplicated nowhere else. And their mantra is, "We're bringing the ocean to the prairie." And so nowhere can you go as deep into the prairie as the state of South Dakota and find the kinds of things that you can right in our own Sioux Falls, you know, at the Arboretum, or excuse me, at the Butterfly House and Aquarium. You know, they have seahorses, they have stingrays, um, they've got a petting pool, you know, where you can actually touch the stingrays. I mean, it's small, but their vision is big. And this is, uh, this and when I, again, when I was on the chamber and they were approved for their, their um, fund drive, this is to help them move into the bigger dream of making that aquarium operation even bigger. It's getting a lot of attention and a lot of use. They're also really, really good about being inclusive and having in, um, programming for low incomes and they do a lot of things for free um, for people in need. So it's just um, a really good thing that we have going and the butterfly uh, part of it is just, I mean, it's fabulous. They, it's used for cancer patients. Um, go out there and and get free passes and and you know then the uh, education piece as well. 
but they're just, they've outgrown their facility, they've had a bigger vision for some time, and they just needed some help being pushed over the top. And with the chamber money that they have already and um, what the city's doing for them, they'll be able to expand into their, their big dream vision, and I think it's going to be a real tremendous asset for the city of Sioux Falls. Yeah, they're a nonprofit organization, and I don't think they've ever gotten any assistance from the city, mm -hmm. and they do so much for the citizens, so I think it's great that we're uh, obviously we can help them at one time here for the first time. So they're looking at a $4.2 million expansion, but this uh, ARPA money um, from the American Rescue Act plan and some then maybe some CARES Act money would be about uh, 500000 that would help boost their their funds to help them move forward. It, it, like a lot of the nonprofits, this is just to add on to what they've already privately raised. A lot of them took a pause during the pandemic and really couldn't raise any money. So this is this is the public private partnership that we so much talk about. Just to push them to their final goal, we could contribute and get them to that. Sure. Uh, let's move on to some of these others. Um, there are lots of, of worthy um, places that are going to receive some funding. Uh, the, we have the Youth and Community Violence Intervention Program. Um, can anybody uh, here talk a little bit about, about what that is? Well, certainly, we, we allocated some tracks of money for, di now, this would, one of those would be the YMCA, the Boys and Girls Club. Of course, you know that they've taken a, a different track in the last few years along with the YMCA building, conjunction with the Boys and Girls Club. So what they are very close to their fundraising goals, this would actually put them to where they needed to be, the extra 500,000 that we've allocated for that, because they these kids today need some place to go and some structure, and they're gonna expand their, outreach to that so they can do that. So we really just tagged on to what the community is doing for that. There's the Mary Jo Wagner Arboretum. Um, that's going to receive some uh, some funding. What, what exactly is that and uh, why is it such an asset to the city? Well, of course, it, it's the Arboretum and the gardens that are east of Sioux Falls. And of course, they've been donated and they've got their own board. And this is to help them with their long term. There's three phases that they've done. The first phase is done. This is to plan for the second phase. And hopefully in our capital budget, we have planned out to help them with their third phase to get that. Actually, I think phase three might come before phase two in the way the plans are laid out. But that, as with the Butterfly House and Aquarium, is a great asset for the city. Talk about quality of life that you can go walk around the gardens out there and get a picture of actually what East Sioux Falls used to be like in the day when it was just quarries and actually there was a brothel out there and they're going to expand and let everybody know what actually that was. It's a great group and it's great for Sioux Falls. So it's kind of a history lesson as well. Correct. Okay. There was a point in time when East Sioux Falls was far larger than the current Sioux Falls that we live in. It was a boom town but when the bottom dropped out of the quarry market uh, the the the, what is it, the the quartzite when the bottom the bottom dropped out of the quartzite market when cement block was invented um, and then they just disappeared it just kind of came and it went um, but it, it is where all the beautiful quartzite I'm looking at the you know the back of our, our staged area has come from in Sioux Falls and it went it was shipped as far as Chicago back in the day. That's an interesting history lesson. I did not know that. Better get out to the Arboretum. Uh, but, <laughs> I've been there, but I didn't know that history. Uh, well, well this, now you will, because now they're going to have a little funding, and maybe we can all get out there and, and learn some more about uh, Sioux Falls' history. Um, let's talk about the public safety home buying program. Um, Councilor Sale, th this is uh, one of the things that you were um, looking forward to as well. Uh, correct. What has happened in some other cities is they've realized that when you put a police officer or firefighter in certain parts of town that might need a little updating and maybe has a little bit of crime, that the crime kind of moves away from that location. So if you have a, a police officer that's living two doors down, you're probably not going to have a crack house right next to that. So what we've tried to do is replicate what they've done in some of these other cities and we're going to give police fire a boost for their down payment if they buy a house and it meets certain specifications and we're going to use the U.S. Census tracts as they identify what neighborhoods would be based, based on income, based on uh, prices of housing, and also based on crime. 
So if you're a, in today's market, as some of us know, it's pretty tight out there. So hopefully this will be a boost to police and fire and not just Sioux Falls police and fire. You know, there's two fire departments in Sioux Falls professionally. Air Guard has their own fire department. They could qualify. So could Highway Patrol and Deputy Sheriffs, they would qualify for this also. So we've allocated some money and I think it will keep, it will keep our employees happier and it will also help those neighborhoods. Sure. Yeah, kudos to Councilor Sale on that program. It's a good program and makes a lot of sense. Well, and Marsha can talk to, too about how tight the housing market is. So hopefully this will help them get the, get a home. A whole nother section of show. So, <laughs> so, so some of some of the homes we're probably talking about are in the in the middle of town in Central Sioux Falls. Correct. Is that you know where you know maybe some places are being turned into rentals or trying to get more families to move back into the to the areas of uh, Central Sioux Falls instead of on the out, outskirts of the city. Right. That's that's one of the reasons we're trying to do it too, is to make that make sure that those core areas or those areas in the center part of town don't always all turn into rentals. That home ownership is a huge thing, I believe. If you take pride in your home, you take pride in your city and they go hand in hand. Sure. And let's talk about the senior disabled um, municipal property tax refund. So if you're uh, over 65 and if you're a single person with less than $30,000 in income, or if you have uh, multiple people in your household, it's about 30, less than 37,000, um, you'll get a tax break, is that correct? Uh, yes, yeah, so this is one Councilor Starr and I have worked on a little bit. So the state regulations right now, you can get a property tax freeze if you meet those criteria. So what we've said is let's go forward and say, we as a city of Sioux Falls will give you our share of your property taxes back if you meet those criteria, over 65, certain income levels, that you can do that. And we're going to team up with the county, we're still working them on the process, but we're gonna team up with the county because they're the ones that currently run the state's structure. They mean, so you have to all submit all your information to the county. We don't wanna duplicate that. We want the county just to send us over the list and then we would rebate the, only the city share of your property tax. So it's a yearly thing, you have to reapply every year. One of the things we all hear as we sit in the Board of Equalization every spring is that uh, taxes are going up at a faster rate as certainly if this, you're on a fixed income. So what we're hoping to do, right now there's r roughly 441 that would qualify for this in the city of Sioux Falls. And if we did that at a maximum of $500, it doesn't amount to a lot of money in a $650 million budget. But for those people making that low income, we think that's a significant step forward. Again, this goes to home ownership. And I believe that's saying if we can do just a little bit to try and help them stay in their houses, that's what we're striving for. Sure. Yeah. And you're keeping people in their homes and you're keeping the program simple. I mean, it's basically if you qualify for the tax freeze, you qualify for the program and it's not a big Correct. government bureaucracy program, which that's a challenge in itself a lot of times with these programs is keeping it simple. So, so if there are people out there who might qualify for this, um, how are they notified? Are they notified or do they have to be proactive and try to um, fill out an application? We're still working on the details on that. The, the, the whole structure is still in the mix. We're gonna have it done by the end of the year so it can be put in place for next year. How we're gonna promote that, we still don't quite have all those details worked out, but we will do that. Okay, so you can, you can kind of keep, keep track of this maybe from SiouxFalls.org or there will be information out yes, there. Yes, we're certainly gonna reach out to those places like the Center for Active Generations and et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. And I think once the word of mouth gets out there, you know, it'll catch on pretty quick. Sure. Uh, we have the skate park at Nelson Park. Um, that's coming up, and I know that there's a lot of buzz around um, that new skate park. Um, any of you have been involved in that? I, I'd like to talk about that because I, I like the little history lesson that goes with that. You know, mm -hmm. I was back, you know, working at the city when um, years ago they the city embarked upon its first skateboard park, and and. Pam Baker was a city council member at the time and she was really instrumental in that and we were busy passing ordinances to kick them out of downtown because they were railing and they were they were busting up the steps and the rails on the properties in downtown and so Tam came up with the idea well let's make a place that they can go rather than just you know do what government usually does do regulations and just shoo them and then they'll go somewhere else 
And so we, we started a small skateboard park. At the time, the question was, was just this just a trend or was this for real, was it permanent? Well, we now know it wasn't a trend. I mean, it, now it's an Olympic sport and um, you know, uh, it's, it's a, a sport that anybody can take up with low cost, you know, you just need a helmet, some pads, and, and, a, and a skateboard. So it, this has taken it to the next level, which the city needs to do. They've outgrown it, it's, it's kind of wearing out, and it is an exciting, uh, there's an exciting culture of skateboarding that, that does exciting things, and it is a sport, and it is staying, and so this will take it to the next level, and it's going to be, it's destined to be really a beautiful place, a beautiful skateboard park um, that is just open to everyone. It's a sport that takes guts. I can't believe what some of those people do out there. <laughs> Amazing. Tony Hawk started all that way back in the day, and, and, yeah. and um, so yeah, this it looks like um, as up up to eight hundred thousand dollars may be um, available to help boost this uh, skate skateboard park, um, and uh, it would be in conjunction with private funding. So is there a group that has gotten together that's going to start doing a fundraising campaign and, and raise money um, on their own? Yeah, they have the, their own their own association that's doing that. They're actually part of the Chamber Appeal coming up. So the city's money would come in after the Chamber Appeal to see how far they can actually get. So we've allocated up to that to get this facility up to date. So first is the Chamber Appeal, which they're working on, and then is the City of Sioux Falls. Okay. Um, next, there's a Tomar Park outdoor tennis facility. Uh, who, who has information about, um, you know, what, uh, it's a total of uh, 12 tennis courts. Will these be new or are they, are they going to be revamped? I believe they're all new and there's some other um, activities they're fitting in with this um, development too, I believe. And I think it comes along with a lot of the same theme, you know, like with the skateboard park and the other things with the quality of life, but also things for our youth to do kind of keeping them busy in their off times. And I kind of equate this deal and the programs they have through tennis a lot with like the first tee and with golf, where there's a, a, that program is really good at keeping a lot of kids, getting them in the right direction and teaching them not just about sports, but life and everything else in general. So I think this will tie in with that same type of goal along with a number of these other programs. And I think too, it's, you know, as the city grows, it's taking certain things to the next level. And that's what this does for tennis. In order to have um, tournaments and stuff, there's, they need so many courts, and this will bring us, you know, actually, uh, Rapid City is ahead of us. This will actually, you know, bring us into that that regional arena where we can host those kinds of things and just raise the level of that sport. And I, I can't help but mentioning we were just talking about earlier in our little league baseball players. Well, that's a place where the city has done that. I mean, Sherman Park used to be the park of parks, and then there was a point where. The city said, we need to take that to the next level, and they built Harmondon, and that was all showing the city's commitment to that sport, who has always been very strong in Sioux Falls. So, you know, just, we're doing the same kind of thing in different levels, but that's a place where I'm happy to say I think the city's very, you know, has been very successful, and look look at the beneficiaries of that, and look how, how proud they've made us, and what they've, they've done for the city of Sioux Falls about how they handled themselves during that world-class tournament. That was just exciting as all get out. So sure. this is just the same kinds of things, only different sports, all in the theme of you know keeping our youth occupied and having healthy things to do. Right. And you know that publicity with those those young people going out and, and competing like this, that puts Sioux Falls on the map. How does that help um, on a nationwide scale to to have all of that publicity come back and say that you know this group is from Sioux Falls. Well, people are going to look at that and they're going to say, "Hey, I want to do, I want to be part of that. Mm -hmm. I want my kids to be part of that. I want to be part of that economy. They want to come to Sioux Falls, the downtown Sioux Falls. All the energy that we have going on right now, it is. As somebody told me it's like the arrow has been loosened. We pulled back the bow, and now the arrow's coming forward. So as we talk to these different people from all across the country that are moving to Sioux Falls, businesses, homeowners, professionals, they see the little league baseball team. They see the tennis courts." They see the Butterfly House, and that's, those are the tours they get when they come. So their excitement is just through the roof right now. As we know, there seems to be a housing shortage, and they're building as fast as they can in the city. And you can't hardly drive from one part of the city to the next without some road construction going on. And kudos to our mayor and the administration for giving the largest percentage of our budget that we've, I mean, we're putting more money into streets in Sioux Falls, streets and upkeep than we ever have. And 
that's a booming city, that's a growing city, that's a vibrant city. And that's why all of these things that we're talking about, most of these are quality of life. There's a few cost things that are associated with what we did, but most of them are quality of life, which keep bringing them. That's why I want my kids to stay here, my grandchildren to stay here. So I'm sorry, I get pretty excited when you talk about what we, <laughs> what we have for the city. Sure. No, and uh, we have talked about a lot, but we have a lot more coming up. We're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about uh, the mayor's proposed budget. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi, I'm Dr. Strasberg from Falls Community Health, here today to talk to you about your child's dental health. By age 12 months, your baby should be switching from bottle to sippy cup. Babies and toddlers of any age should not be allowed to have bottles of milk in bed with them at night. Bacteria use that milk for food and then cause cavities in your baby's teeth. Juice and soda should not be given to babies or toddlers. Any questions you have about your child's dental health can be answered by your physician or Falls Community Health. Welcome back to Inside Town Hall, where we are having a roundtable discussion and we have as our guest City Councilor Marshall Selberg. Councillor Kurt Sale and Councillor Janet Brecky, thank you for being here. Let's talk about the uh, 2022 proposed budget, which will be adopted uh, later this month. Uh, do you want to start off on um, how big is this budget and what are some of the highlights of it? Well, it's a $654 million budget, and I believe that's about $5 million less than projected revenues. I've done my homework correctly, and I think most of it's going towards the basics this year, like 72% of it is like water reclamation, going towards roads, going towards public safety. So you, you don't want to call anything boring, but I don't think as far as for the most part, the, the meat of this budget has been pretty much the basics and what we need. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're talking about highways and streets and some of the things that were going to be um, reconstructed, um, improved. Um, you know, the, the big one that people have been talking about is the 41st Street um, and I-229. Your eyes just got really big in the I-229. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to work, but um, traffic engineers say it's going to be sweet. And the I-29 right? um, improvements. I know, we were talking about that, um, about how you're going to go on the opposite side of the road, but just stay in the lines, people. That's what they tell me. Yeah. Stay between the lines and you won't even know you left whatever side of the road. Well, that's a huge project <laughs> because, you know, it's, it's so busy out there. Mm -hmm. So many people come up and down 41st year, down 229. So the traffic engineers, and those guys are smart. They understand what they're doing, and they're going to make that it's going to be sweet when it's done. Now, an old guy like me will probably have to drive it a few times before I get it figured out. But it's going to be great. And it's those type of improvements that this budget is, like Marshall said, is very strong on the basics. There are a few things. We have another employee going into the planning department for planning review because the amount of building permits that we have, this year is going to hit another record for the amount of building permits, the total dollar amount. So we need somebody to help, whether it be a small contractor or a large developer or a homeowner, get to their plans done in a quicker basis. We're gonna have another city attorney in that office because they're just overwhelmed with work that comes along. Some of the issues that they have to deal with are so complex, they need a lot of more hands. We've got more police officers in there too because we're a growing city. And as things change, we need a few more police officers. So we'll probably see that every year as we go forward. Yeah, usually at what, four or five a year, it seems, in the police yeah. force. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the things I'm excited about is, you know, there's a focus on neighborhood revitalization and housing. Um, we're, we're continuing under the one platform to be focused on meeting the housing needs and understanding that we're coming from behind and it's going to stay that way for a while, but we're still, you know, putting money you know, into that and the, the thinking behind the neighborhood revitalization program is, you know, actually you know, try to breathe new housing opportunities into our core neighborhood. Uh, Councilor Sale talked about that a little earlier. I, I think that's huge, you know, to our city and I'm really excited about the fact that this administration has led us to, to what I call explode the core with development um, because that's where our infrastructure already is. It's a very economic way for a city to grow. And with the two big exciting projects, you know, the, the private sector's coming in with the Rail Yard Flats project, the, the, um, the Sioux Steel project, um, that's going to be huge. But we have to also realize there's a second ring around that core, and that's your neighborhoods. And those are going to be the neighborhoods that we want to posture to service, you know, to service that downtown core. So you want to have good housing in there. They're talking about, you know, getting some of the old stuff out, the city buying it, putting in four plexes, eight plexes. 
not giant apartment complexes, but you know, good, you know, nice small living, you know, things that keep your core updated along with the, the, the police program, you know, the, the, the public safety program that Kurt talked about. Um, just doing a lot with that core, and that, that also is a huge crime prevention issue. If you can prevent you know, having slums by, let, by just ignoring neighborhoods and let them fall into disarray. Um, that's a huge quality of life and, and, and health, life health safety issue. And those kinds of things are what do that. Get those old properties out of there, get different people in there, you know, really make it a thriving, what I call second ring around the middle of the city. So I'm excited about those things and the mayor's commitment to those things. You know, a lot of people when they, when they um, you know, start, start their careers and then they start their families, you know, a lot of those houses in the core are smaller. What, what can be done to attract, you know, families that have three and four or five kids and back into those, but those homes are small? Could that be, you know, making lots bigger or, or um, you know, knocking down, like you said, some properties and expanding the maybe the lot size. Are there other, is there precedent in other, other cities that they did that to come in and, and make those areas um, a little bit bigger and more attractive? I think one of the things they're looking at that I'm really excited and, about and I'm waiting to see it come forward is doing a TIF in the core, in, you know, doing a TIF in a neighborhood TIF. And I don't know exactly how that works, mm -hmm. but if they can do that, that is a way that you can, you know, bring money into the neighborhood to actually lift up, you know, lift up those distressed properties and actually do it in a sectional fashion that actually lifts it up. I think that's when people feel safe and when, when the neighborhoods are pretty, um, they want to live in the core because it's nice not to have to drive far, you know, and so, it, you know, if you have a you know, if you can really improve those neighborhoods and make people feel safe and, and you know, that it's a very good neighborhood, that will attract them. Okay. And just for our viewers who might not know what a TIF is, it's a tax increment financing. Um, it's funding, I don't know, you can explain it. It's, it's funding incentives to help people it's, it's build. A, it's a, it, it has to deal with your property taxes, so you're not paying property taxes on the improvement that you can use them for other things. We're going to have to tweak the state law to allow for housing is one of the things that's getting worked on. So what Council Brecky said, it's not, not only looked at for the core, but it's also looked at if we have future developments, because we hear from developers, I can't build an affordable house in the way it's structured. So we've got all of those things on the table. There might be some tweaks needed in state law to get that done, but that's one of the vehicles that we're looking at right now okay and we have about a minute left of our program uh, if you want to go around very quickly and say you know what is your um, most important issue that you'd like to see happen in, in this budget in the next year I'll just do a quick plug for uh, we talked about a program called Operation Hope not long ago that we all worked on together and I just wanted to remind folks that it's out there it's five hundred thousand dollars it's been allocated for citizens to tap into to help with if you've got anxiety depression chemical dependency issues of any kind so go to the link sf.org or call 275-1000 it's a program right now we're currently working through the link uh, to get people some help so I'll just take a few seconds there but again pass on the word I think we all know somebody who needs a service like that Okay. I, that's an outstanding program that counselor uh, that he put together and and really Marshall's done a great job promoting that so I'll put my two cents in for <laughs> his plug yeah link sf l i n k s f dot org or two seven five one thousand if you go to their website it has a little blurb about operation hope and what all it does okay and I'll take Kurt's because I have two okay. and they're not large but I I really want to uh, try to get some money appropriated for Lutheran social services to do on-site English class training in conjunction with the private sector to help uh, create pathways for success in the workplace. And then I'm also, um, you know, interested. I'm, I'm going to be meeting with Darren Smith over at the Pavilion, and we're trying to look at a long-range, a five-year long-range plan for the municipal band to try to reinvent it. Um, and it's not going to be really expensive. I've always, we're already just doing a little dabbling. It's not going to be really expensive, but just, just enough to, you know, actually really reward it for its 100 years and try to make it even a little more visible around the community and just, um, you know, a way of appreciating it and um, having it be more successful. All right. Well, those are all, that's all good information for our viewers. So we are out of time. Check out SiouxFalls.org for all the latest city news and information.